welcome to the wide world of esports, the show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, we're talking about esports events going live. With me today is Angela Bernard Thomas, Executive Vice President of Esports U. Welcome, Angela. Hi, Catherine. Very nice to meet you and be with you here today to talk about esports. Fantastic. So I understand that you are on the north shore of Oahu. How are the waves today? That's great. I didn't check the wave report, but uh, in the past few days, waves have been up. Um, and I'm going to go and check it out after this, though. All right. Fantastic. Are you a surfer by any chance? I'm not, but my children are. So I'm, I'm going to learn now. Fantastic. Um, so what's eSports U? Well, we've got a lot of great things going on. eSports U is a division of Collegiate Sports Management Group, uh, CSMG for short. CSMG is a property rights management company, meaning that we represent uh, conferences and colleges on both the traditional sports side as well as the sports sides for sponsorships, media rights, licensing, uh, name image, image likeness deals, um, valuations. So essentially we're responsible for monetizing the intellectual property of schools in traditional athletics, as well as esports. And we've been doing esports now for about a year and uh, represent uh, close to 500 colleges and um, we have represent 23 different conferences and five of those also have esports in them. All right, and intellectual property is really important to esports. Are you an attorney or are you like in an agent position? I'm not, I'm, I, I would say in my heart, I'm a producer, born a producer, I would think. I love to create and build things. Um, in my career in, in esports, I've I've been a first mover and and, and a pioneer in, in in starting things in esports. It's a it's an amazing space where you have the opportunity to really innovate and and be first to market on things. And I think that's one of the things that we're really excited about esports. You and this event that we've stood up here in the past six months. Uh, called the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty exciting thing we've got going. And I'd love to tell you more about that as well. Okay, let's talk about that. Is that an in-person event or is that virtual? It is an in-person event. And we are so excited about it. Um, historically, it's very important for collegiate esports in general. It, it represents the largest assembly of schools, teams, players, conferences. We're going to have 64 different teams competing across four different game titles, Valorant, Super Smash Brothers, Ultimate, Rocket League, and Overwatch. Close to 500 competitors will be participating in this event. Uh, 272 uh, you know, starting teams with all their substitutes and coaches and admins and athletic directors and commissioners coming. This has never been done before in collegiate esports. And, you know, we really spent the past year sort of nurturing the idea that collegiate esports is a little, you know, fragmented in its formative stages. Let's create an event that happens at the end of the season where we can go into a market and bring economic impact into a market, bring the community together, activate local colleges, uh, you know, industries like to see that happening as well. Our event will be happening in Atlanta at the Gateway Center Arena, May 7th and 8th. And uh, collegiate esports is starting to get ecosystems inside these markets that work very closely with the convention visitors bureaus and the sports commissions, just how they would want to bring a, a big 
NCAA basketball tournament to their market. Markets are now vying to bring major esports events to their market. They realize that video games, cosplay, esports is all very popular amongst ages, you know, 16 to 34. And it really is becoming the, you know, national pastime uh, of a lot of people, you know, as well as also because of its tech centric, you know, um, careers involved around it. It's also really building the workforce and the leadership of tomorrow through esports. So, in looking at that event, um, how did, how were the uh, teams so selected to participate? Okay. So, the 64 teams ended up there. We run our own event series, uh, which we, we call them regional events, invitational. We invite schools to come in and participate in those same four game titles that I mentioned before. And then we also reached out to conferences like Mountain West uh, and uh, the MEAC and ECAC and the East Coast College Conference and the Peach Belt and the NJCAAE, which represents all two-year colleges across the country. We, we represent some of those conferences and then invited additional conferences by giving them bids into our tournament. So we would offer different commissioners that run conferences a bid into the tournament. And then from their regular season playoffs, they would determine a winner through their matches. And then they elect that winner to send to participate in our collegiate esports commissioners cup. Um, are there any Hawaii teams that are participating? Okay, well, that's very interesting. Uh, University of Hawaii actually participated in one of our regional events. And um, they also participate in the Mountain West Conference. And while they gave it their best battle and best put foot forward, they did not end up being the winning team. In, in either of those events, but we love them. We love University of Hawaii esports team. We do have a bit of a delegation coming to the event from Hawaii. We actually have a studio that we run here on Hawaii, the esports U studio. We have four full-time staff that work in there. We produce 12 hours of live collegiate esports content a day. So that team that works in that studio will be coming to Atlanta uh, to be part of the crew, creating social content, helping with production. Uh, back of house production in esports events is very similar to any type of sporting event, you know, or a music festival or anything. It's quite advanced, the production that goes on behind the scenes. And then as one more, and then as well from Hawaii, we also have PC Gamers Hawaii coming, who will be coming there and they will be doing a PC build right on site. So young people that are interested in learning how to build their own PC can come and watch. There'll be little tutorials and we'll also be uh, raffling off some of those uh, PCs that they're building there on site. So. Hawaii will be well represented and loved at this event. So the eSports U um, um, brand, is, is it, I mean, the, your facility, is it on Oahu in Honolulu? Yes. Or? yes. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. Yep. Small studio. We run very efficiently, very lean. Uh, during the day, what we do is we schedule the most important collegiate esports matches that are going on. Uh, we broadcast them live. We put high end broadcast graphics around it and we hire talent. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure if you know, but in esports, well, of course you do. But in esports, we have shout casters, uh, which are similar to sports casters, except they understand everything that's going on in the video games and they are calling the the plays and and you know highlighting the the competitors that are playing so we have we have high-end talent that shout cast each match 
the the college students love this they're actually you know getting casted by talent it's very exciting for them and then at the same time we produce a whole second stream that we capture that is all student led uh, producers so we're helping train producers in esports and we also do student casting so we're training casters teaching them to be talent casting talent host talent you know and production talent so we 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 really place an importance on what we can give back to students and colleges and the esports programs to really elevate you know their experience uh, in esports throughout their college, you know, time spent there, and hopefully they walk away with something that they can take into their career as well. So let's talk about the live event. Have you had any live events yet in COVID? We had two live events last year, actually. Uh, we had one in South Bend, Indiana at the Bendex Arena, which was a, a newly built esports arena. It went very well. We brought in 32 teams uh, from across the uh, Midwest region that came in and com competed. They qualified to compete in our national event, the Commissioner's Cup. And then we also held another regional in Florida, in Kissimmee, Florida, which again was a great success these students are just thrilled to be able to get back together be in the same room competing they they build friends they they trade ideas they talk about their careers uh you know they form long-term relationships and friendships at these events and we believe that they're very important live events we run a lot of online events as well but live events you know, I believe uh, is really in very, there's a lot of pent up demand right now for live events. So we feel very confident that we're gonna get a full house at our event in terms of ticket sales. We've already sold over a thousand tickets for Saturday, which is a win for us in terms of esports. Uh, we're, we're activating a lot of community there through groups like the Atlanta Esports Alliance. Uh, which is part of the Atlanta Sports Commission, activating the Georgia Scholastic Esports Federation, which organizes all the high schools and high school coaches. We're going to be having a Coaches Cup, small little feature inside of our event. So we really think we're checking a lot of boxes in terms of what makes an event exciting for people to attend. First of all, people like to come out and see competitive gameplay. If you go to a football game, you want to see teams that are, you know, worthy opponents of each other. And th at this event, we will have the 64 best teams in the country competing against each other. But we don't stop there. So you started your company in 2021 then? So I came on as a, a consultant at Collegiate Sports Management Group in 2021, uh, ran a few events for them. And then beginning January, 2021, uh, 22, I came on as the executive vice president of Esports U, running the whole vertical now, standing up some of these initiatives that I've been talking about here today with you. So was there any, I mean, it sounds like you boldly go into doing these live events. Have you had any, uh, challenges with the pandemic? Well, not of yet. Um, we obviously always follow the protocols that the venue has in place in terms of, you know, cleaning stations in between matches, uh, wearing masks. Right now, Atlanta is pretty open in terms of their policies. They follow the state of Georgia. So we generally follow whatever state we're in. And when we did do the event in South Bend, there were COVID protocols that we had to follow there. Again, when we went into Florida, there was COVID protocols like wearing masks, social distancing. We've all seen that lighten up a little bit now across the board. 
Uh, so there, the, the protocols in Georgia are there's not a mask mandate, although on the production side, we do have a mask mandate for our production crew. Uh, there is not a, a vaccine mandate as of now for the event. So we follow what are the protocols of the venue. We depend on them to sort of set those guidelines for us and the attendees. And have you learned any lessons about having events during COVID era? Yeah, I think the biggest event, uh, the biggest takeaway is just to, you know, be mindful, um, you know, about interacting with people. We haven't had to cancel any events because of, you know, a major happening or anything like that. I did myself attend several conferences last year where uh, the mandates were pretty strict. Even at those, there were, you know, happenings of, of COVID there. Uh, I, I think it was pretty common for the end of last year. I have not traveled here since the beginning of January. And I don't know about you, but, um, you know, I still want to be as cautious as I can when traveling and washing my hands and and things like that. But we haven't had any upsets because of COVID at any of our events. That's terrific. Do you have any advice for putting on live events? Yes. I mean, there's <laughs> this whole event that we're doing is really a lesson in itself. First of all, just from the you know historical importance of what we're doing and for the first time, you know, bringing all these organizations together that generally would compete against each other. So we're learning how to be very collaborative in a space that is in its formative era. And we truly believe that we are creating a framework in which all of collegiate esports will benefit from, not just from our event. And I would say that one of the biggest things that we deal with in live esport events is the marketing side of it. And what we've found is that there's no magic formula here. It literally is just layers of anything and everything that you can do to attract micro communities to come and enjoy your event. So for instance, you know, we've really partnered with a lot of great uh, community leaders in the, in the area like the Georgia Scholastic Esports Federation, who really knows how to activate high schools. We partnered with a group called Most Valuable Kids, and we'll be giving all of them, we've got 500 young people coming to this for Most Valuable Kids. We'll be giving them a, a comp ticket and a sponsor will come in and you know, pay for them to have a lunch while they're at the event. Uh, we've activated the cosplay community to come out and wear costumes and we're giving away a thousand dollar prize for who has the best costume when they come out. We've partnered with the Atlanta Falcons who is gonna be there in the parking lot doing a football toss and, and having their mascot out there where we've got a DJ out there uh, we've got the Atlanta Skyhawks, which this is their arena that we're in. The Air Force is coming out and, and highlighting their AR truck, which is a simulation truck. Young people will be able to go in and try out flying an airplane. Um, we've got a DJ. We've got five food trucks. So all of this is to market the event. And, and we are, we do paid social media campaigns. Uh, we do a lot of press. We have a great uh, press agency that we work with, DKC, one of the best in the world in sports and esports. We do a lot of press releases with our partners. That's very important. That's where we can get a lot of our messaging out there, you know, so the industry sees why we're doing this event how we're pulling it off, how we're being collaborative in the space. We do a lot of uh, organic social media posts. And because you know, we believe that 
esports, especially collegiate esports, is a very passionate community. We get a lot of earned social content out there. So we're we're super excited uh, about it. As with anything, it's both exciting and terrifying at the same time. So in the end, we'll take away all the engagement metrics and learnings from our, our marketing. But I sure. would say don't skimp on your marketing budget. Absolutely. So I was interviewed by CJ Horgan on the news. Um, I think it was maybe over a year ago. And he it was about esports and uh, kind of the emergence of esports. Although I think that the general public is not as knowledgeable about esports generally, like the older generation, maybe not so much uh, people that are not into gaming or into this environment. But I did mention in that interview that I thought that Hawaii needs a Tom Moffat in order to put events on in esports. And I kind of see you as that Tom <laughs> Moffat of esports. And so because you're such a you you seem to have so much passion and experience in putting on events. Do you see yourself putting on events in Hawaii? I mean, thank you for the compliment. And um, I think I could be a promoter all day long in Hawaii. And I agree with you 100%. Hawaii would, would welcome with open arms any type of esports event that we could bring here. Uh, what the group that that works with us in the studio is led by Kyler Tandel. He's a native here. Uh, great example of the careers in esports. He gave up a job working at Pearl Harbor as a nuclear mechanic, and we we offered him this position to run this studio. Young person, 26 years old, left his job at Pearl Harbor and is now running an esports studio here here on. Hawaii. So it's very exciting. So he knows all of the community. So between he and I, we would love to get together. And I think you're the third wheel here. Uh, we've got a great delegation. So I say, let's do it. Our company's on board for it. Absolutely. Okay. So after your Atlanta event, uh, what do you have planned uh, for the future? Well, we're not going to stop there. We're going to be selling for our Atlanta event in 2023. We'll be going back to Atlanta, most likely. Um, and then we have lots of regionals coming up in the fall. We're going to have a summer series running. We're going to do a collegiate esports award show. We're going to run an athletic directors and coaches convention for collegiate esports. We're going to run a Fortnite series. So we've got a lot of stuff planned uh, after the Atlanta event. Terrific. Well, I'll give you the last word and let you uh, tell people how they can find you. Thank you, Catherine, so much. So best place to find me is on LinkedIn. You can go there, Angela Bernhard Thomas. They're putting it up here on the signage. But if you want to see more about the event, you could go to cecc.gg. Terrific. Well, Angela, thank you so much. And good luck um, to you and your team in putting on this great event in Atlanta uh, very soon. Thank you, Catherine. And thank you for inviting us. All right. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today. My guest next week will be April Welch for a special Star Wars Day show. May the 4th be with you. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, 
Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.